This week on Case Studies with the BizDoc, it's Discord, the chat for gamers. Or wait a minute, isn't it chat for everyone? I've got the history, where they're going, and what's up with Microsoft maybe or maybe not paying $10 billion for the company this week. Discord. It's the chat service that allows you to send pictures, have a quiet chat, a loud chat, a group chat, and send multiple forms of media together in a concentrated, focused way that they call a server. Well, let's take a look at where they came from and where they're going. If you're a gamer, you know all about it, especially if you're an online gamer, massively multiplayer, online, role-playing games. If you're all in that, it wasn't on consoles just yet, but there's some news on that. Where did they start? I'd like to start with a little bit of the history on them and talk about these two guys that founded the company. This guy is Jason Citron, and this guy is Stanislav Vizhnevsky. Now, both of them had worked on mobile game platforms in the past, or just social games platform. And Jason had actually sold a company called Open Faint to a company called Gree for about $104 million. He then turned around and built a game studio called Hammer and Chisel. This would be the the fertile crescent that would lead to Discord. Here's how. As he was building a game studio, after having sold Open Faint, he's got money in his pocket, so he starts a game studio. He also goes to UWeb's 9 Plus Incubator, so he incubated and got the company going, Hammer and Chisel, so he's a game studio. He builds a game that didn't do terribly well. However, along the way, he was discovering that when you're on these massive multiplayer games, you're trying to communicate with your team, such as Final Fantasy, he had a hard time doing strategy. In other words, talking to people during the game to get your squad or your team together to set the strategy and do it. And that gave him the idea for a communication form that would be aligned with the game so you could talk to each other. So we can see how all of this led to the creation of Discord. Now let's talk about a pivot for a minute. A pivot is where you move from what you're doing to something else, but you're using your skills, discoveries, and things that you've put together to launch the pivot wherever it is you're going to. Here they are selling open faint, Jason does, hammer and chisel, failed game, didn't do well, discovered the communication needs inside the game, thinking about Final Fantasy strategy, all that leads to something which is not a game studio. It became a communication platform. So now Discord is born and the pivot is complete. So let's go take a look at the money they raised. Well, they raised their Series A in November of 2013, $8.2 million from Benchmark. And we all know Benchmark, you see Bill Gurley on TV a lot, and Bill Gurley's the hall monitor for the venture capital sector. Then a Series B was raised, but there was not a lot of talk, and I couldn't find research on exactly who was in, but they indicated that sometime at the launch, which was the launch of Discord, officially happened in May of 2015, they raised a little bit more money. But now take a look. They're on one-year cycles here in terms of the utilization of their capital and raising more money and increasing valuation. They raised $20 million here, Series C, and we're at 3 million users and generating an astonishing a million users a month. And that was in January of 16. By the end of 16, they crossed 25 million users, and then in January of 17, they raised $50 million. A year later, well, let's stop right here a second, that by the end of 17, they're at 90 million users. So in other words, this is working, and th th these are gamers that are playing and talking to each other and had their own server, as it's called, and trading pictures and doing a lot of other things. So now you've at 90 million. On the third year anniversary of the launch, May of 15, 16, 17, 18, they were at 130 million users. And in April, they raised $50 million. That was Series E. Now we go to Series F. Uh, Green Oaks gets involved, $150 million. So that was $200 million raised in 2018. Well, they didn't raise anything in 19, at least not publicly stated. And then in 2020, they're at 100 million. Now, this isn't registered users. This is 100 million active users a month. This is moving. It's not the vanity stats. Oh, I have 400,000 followers. And then you, then you look at all their posts, like or tweets or something, you only see about a thousand people responding to each tweet. So how many of those 400,000 are paying attention? You know, you have that dynamic where it's like a vanity stat. You talk about your followers, but then there's the, really the number that are really paying attention day to day. 
They are now at 250 million registered, about 100 million active every month. And they raise another 200 million during the COVID year of 2020. In June, 100 million from Index. In December, another 100 million from Green Oaks. So Green Oaks is way in with both feet, all the chips on the table there. And that is the total of the venture capital round. You can see it kept going. But the venture capital is also following the commercial successes or adding all of these users to it. So I think this is very, very, very interesting. Also in 2020, the COVID year, there was discovered that they had to start moderating just like every other social media platform. Facebook does it, Twitter does it, YouTube does it, that you have things that are out there on the far fringes or that are offensive in some way and you have to go moderate it and take it down. Well, they did. And there were events that happened in the United States, storming of the Capitol and a lot of other things that were very important to help America move forward with, with our diversity and how we treat one another and how we show respect and come to understandings and move forward from some of the things in our past. Well, there were uh, groups that aren't doing it. And so Discord, just like Twitter, just like Facebook, had to step up to the plate and put in moderation and to go cancel accounts of people behaving really offensively and really badly. But they did it. And, you know, there were big headlines. Oh, people are using Discord to organize this. And, you know, people were using Discord to organize that. To their credit, they're like, okay, just like everybody else, we'll get in and we'll take care of it. So hats off to them for doing it. Some people think it should have been faster, but now they've got the systems in place to pull these things back. Now, something happened this year. Remember, this is not on consoles yet. So Discord was is online PC gaming, and this was not in consoles. Here we are in the first quarter, actually we just finished the first quarter of 2021 as we filmed this, and what was going on is Microsoft was negotiating and the rumor was that it was like a $10 billion valuation. Well, down here, Series G and H, they had achieved a $7 billion valuation that was leaked to the public with regard to the money that they raised, Series G, Series H in 2020. So 10 billion, wow, it was 7 billion just six months ago, now it's 10 billion. Well, look at the commercial success of those active users. There's really something here. And also during uh, 2020, let me point something out. They went from gamers where they're replacing IRC and basically a game platform, and suddenly they backed up and they said, no, this is really for everyone. So they opened the window a little bit, and it was a fact that not just gamers were using Discord, there was a lot of other people using Discord, and they had a software development kit and an API so that other people could integrate Discord into their products as well. So now you're with, you've moved from gaming to everyone and you've got a $7 billion valuation. So it's not really surprising that Microsoft would offer 10. That's not what's really significant about Microsoft. What's really significant was with all this commercial success, it wasn't on consoles yet. And here you have the king of the Xbox, the father of the Xbox, Microsoft, coming up and saying, I'm going to pay $10 billion for a company that was just valued at $7 billion. So from seven to 10 billion, and you got the commercial success, and you got the first console player at the table, damn, you're about to break through the ceiling. Because as soon as you get on those consoles, big things happen. Well, guess what? Something happened here, and uh, apparently uh, Microsoft lost its three lives in the game and, and backed out or something happened because there was a quiet announcement that Sony, yep, PlayStation people had invested money into Discord and they would be the first console. So at the time we're filming this, there might be suddenly Microsoft shows up tomorrow with 11 billion or something, but it appears that this has cooled off and stepped back and they've taken money from Sony. So Sony overheard, hey, did you see that uh, Microsoft and Discord are having drinks in the bar? You don't think they're gonna ho go home together, are you? Wait a minute, what? I'm not doing that. If, if there's, if I'm going to be the first console in there, so, or whatever happened there, but you can believe that as these rumors are going around with the commercial success of Discord, that you then had the console player saying, wait, I'm in. No, I'm in. And there you have it. So what I love about this is there's a great lesson for entrepreneurs here. And I want to step back and spend a little bit more time today talking about the lesson. I see three things. Focus on your product, narrow market early, wide market late. Let me talk about this. They focused on the product and they really understood the product. Let me talk about the difference between passion and expertise. Passion is you love fishing. You love to go fishing. And then you want to turn that passion into a business. Who wouldn't? That's understandable. However, if you go to banks, 
you know, I've spoken to bankers who say, if someone comes in and they say, fishing is my passion, fishing, 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 passion, 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 I'm less likely to invest in them than I am someone that says, hey, I happen to know a lot about fishing and I was thinking about this product. I was thinking about this service and I was thinking about how many fishermen might, me might like that. So I did a little bit of research and I found out there's an awful lot of people. Then I found out that there is a, a subset of those that might buy it. So I've done this research and I happen to like fishing myself. So I visualize myself being a consumer, but I'm thinking about the market. See the difference? Expertise with a little passion in it, because it really gets you going, versus pure passion. I've always wanted to have my own business and I love fishing. Well, what happened here was these guys are gamers, gamers at heart, and they discovered a problem. When you're playing a massive multiplayer game and you want to communicate with your team, you can't have delays called latency. It's like where all the gamers out there that are online gamers are very concerned about having fast internet and not having latency because a split second you get shot versus the other guy gets shot because you're playing Call of Duty. So you need fast connection to your home and a fast computer such as Alienware so that you have speed on your side and there's no delay and no latency so you can make split second decisions and win the game. Well, what if you're trying to talk to your group? That was the dawn here. That was what was going on. And so they have experience as gamers, wanted to build a game studio that actually failed. And along the way, they found an opportunity in the market. So they focused on the product delivering something in the market that they happen to, yes, be passionate about. This is where you get success in entrepreneurship. And I, if you want to rewind that for about two minutes here and watch that again, what I just said, it's really important to kind of grasp the difference between finding a gap in the market and putting something in there and cultivating it and turning it into a successful company versus just being passionate about fishing, in my example, and trying to go get a small business loan from the bank or take your own life savings or take friends and family money from people that know and love you and say, oh, you've always been a good fisherman, maybe I'll try that. Their money is in danger and they just don't know it, neither do you. The second thing is narrow market early. I like the fact that they took this, what they knew about gaming, and they drove it right into the gaming market. We're going to do this. It's going to be chat. You can share pictures. You can share videos. It is going to be all about you and the game and everything you can go in there so that this is a very narrow focus conversation in a narrow focus market. So as they grew and they grew with gamers, other people found it useful. So this wasn't to say, and I've seen business plans like this say, hey, BizDoc, I want to show you my business plan. And the last three pages are, and we could do this with it, and we could do that with it, and we could do that with it. And I'm like, folks, these men and women that are trying to put together these wonderful business plans, what is up with the back half of this where you could do this and this and this? Find your market. Find the consumers you understand, narrow, and then make it narrow because now you can tweak your marketing, tweak your, your product features, tweak these into that narrow market. Now, the market has to be big enough to make a buck. It can't just be that there's, you know, a couple hundred potential buyers. The market has to be big enough. But if you're focusing on and here and here and here, that's not the way to do it early. So this was solving a problem for gamers, stayed narrow early on, and guess what? Take a look at what happened to the success. Then go to the wide market late. Last year, in response to everybody starting to use Discord, they went broadly, changed the tagline a little bit, took out the word gamers, and let everybody know this is broad. Hey, get the SDK, Software Development Kit, get the API, programming interface so that you can connect with it and put Discord in wherever you want or just sign up and use Discord for your own purposes right now, even if you don't happen to be a gamer. So the wide market late. These are the lessons I think are really important for any entrepreneur, whether you've built something that's going to be raising $100 million venture rounds and entertaining potential $10 billion uh, offers from Microsoft or taking plan B and just taking some money from Sony. And remember, every minute that goes by with Sony in there, I don't think 10B is the number anymore. I think it's more like 11 or 12, because the minute they're on the Sony console here, they're worth even more than they were yesterday. So whether you're on a path like that to realize some sort of commercial success like this, which is validating and phenomenal and wonderful, or if you're running a t-shirt company in Berlin, my favorite example, the focus on product and a 
and a customer segment to make it a success with a narrow market early and a wide market late, I think this is a fantastic recipe and it's proven here that Discord has done it, making chat, picture sharing, and all the stuff for you and me. There's even more to the case study. Hey, you hey, hey! Brooker, I I'm filming. I have a soccer game. Oh, soccer. I hit you on Discord. I'm doing a case study on Discord. My phone's on mute. I'm telling mommy. The biz doc is in trouble. Man, and I hate being in trouble with the biz doc babe, but I missed a soccer game, I guess, so I gotta go figure that out. By the way, the biz doc is on Discord, the biz doc, Tom Ellsworth. Go friend me, I'll connect with you, and that's where I talk case studies and other things like that on my very own channel server on Discord. It's a great company, and I've loved doing this case study. That's what I think about Discord, but what do you think? Please leave a comment down below. I answer as many as I can. And while you're there, subscribe to Valuetainment Economics and hit the bell. You get those notifications when there's new case studies and other great content. If you like this case study, by the way, there's a whole library of BizDoc case studies, such as this one, you might really enjoy. Until next time, I'm Tom Ellsworth with the BizDoc, and I hope I left you better than I found you. <laughs>